Yeah, we're back on the Sports Max Zone. We're going to talk some cricket now. Australia took an unassailable 2 0 lead in their three match test series against Pakistan after they won the second test by 79 runs at the MCG on Friday. Now, after resuming day four on 187 for six with an overall lead of 241, Australia were eventually dismissed for 262, setting Pakistan a target of 317. The Pakistanis fought valiantly but were eventually dismissed for 237, with Captain Shan Massoud top scoring with 60 against uh, Captain Pat Cummins 5 for 49 and a 10 wicket match haul. Speaking after the match, Pakistan's team director Mohammed Hafiz blamed inconsistent umpiring for his team's defeat. He said, We made some mistakes mistakes as a team, we will take that, we will address those things, but at the same time I believe inconsistent umpiring and technology curse has really given us the result which should have been different. I feel like these are the areas that need to be addressed. I spoke to Rizwan and he's very, a very honest person. He said he did not even feel that it touched anywhere near the gloves and what we saw there should be conclusive evidence to reverse the decision of the umpire. That's what I know. The umpire gave it not out and there was no conclusive kind of evidence where the decision has to be turned over. Mohammed Hafiz there disappointed about some of the umpiring calls and the DRS treatment of some of those um, incidents uh, that we saw in this test match. Ricardo, you've been following this series closely. What did you make of the contest overall? And uh, Mohammed Hafiz, Hafiz's uh, comments. Yeah, I want to start Lance, by having a look specifically at the Rizwan dismissal yes. that Mohammed Afiz spoke about. Um, mm -hmm. Because, in my opinion, the right decision was made. Um, but we can have a look at that yes. um, to come to that determination for ourselves um, to see if we're all on the same page on this one. There is a, a, a bigger point to be made um, about the issue of umpire's call, but I'll, I'll get to that shortly and the match itself. By the way, this was a, a magnificent test match it in was. my opinion. It like, was, yeah. Um, quality cricket from both teams, high quality bowling um, from um, both teams, Pakistan as well I think again Pakistan let themselves down and it's a large part of why they ended up on the losing end um, Abdullah Shafiq yeah. put down two opportunities in the match one David Warner in the first innings yeah. he went on to score 38 and then, Marsh. and then the more important one as far as I'm concerned Mitch Marsh when he was on 20 Australia struggling in their second innings at 4 for 46 and a very well, there were, simple they were catch. 16 for 4 at they one were point. 16 for 4 at yeah. one stage and yeah. then 4 for 46 when the catch was put down. Right, yeah. And for me, that that probably changed the test match yeah. um, because it took a lot of the sting out of the Pakistan bowlers and it gave Mitch Marsh and Steve Smith, who were at the crease at the time, a lot of confidence. And they well, Marsh actually made 96. There you go. And the, and the partnership was 153. There you go. And, and you could look at that partnership as a match-changing partnership. Now to the Rizwan dismissal, yeah. um, which, of course, uh, Mohamed Afiz says he was extremely disappointed with. He's right. It was given not out by the umpire on field. Pat Cummins went upstairs. Um, and uh, let's, have a, let's have a close look. So he is saying there is no conclusive evidence that the ball touched glove. Now, from the replay I just saw, it seems to me to be relatively clear um, that the ball did touch um, the glove. Yeah, catch yeah. the glove on its way through to the to the keeper. Yeah. Um, what about the spike that we just saw? Where would that have come from? In 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 the DRS review. Well, let's have another uh, look at it, um, and we can try and make a determination um, just so I can understand specifically. Of what you're referring to. Yeah. Um, so let's see if we can if we can get that again, and maybe if we can slow down that aspect of it. So yeah. it's given not out on field. Um, Pat Cummins goes upstairs. Here we yeah, go. There is this the, the Snicko spike I was yeah. talking about, but at the point we are unable to see exactly where the ball is. So it could have been the elbow. Um, so I, I think I understand Afis's position that it was inconclusive. 
Yeah, I think when you look at, unfortunately, we, we don't have more of those replays. But yes. when you have a close look at the replays, I think, well, as far as I'm you, concerned... You, you thought it, it touched glove. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I thought that was pretty clear, to be honest. So yeah. on, on that point, I don't agree with Mohamed Afis. Um, he is also right when he says that Pakistan let themselves down, as I pointed out, well, because of the that, opportunities yeah. that they put down. Having said all of that, Lance, I have a massive issue with the idea of umpire's call. Just because the same scenario that keeps Lance Whitaker at the crease is the same scenario that could lead to my dismissal, as we, we have another look there at it. And I have a major issue with that because... Let's look at a football scenario, Lance. Let us say in football that the offside rule came down to um, the, the referee's call. So you are a centimeter offside, but because the referee said didn't make a call, yeah. um, it gets deemed onside. Um, but if the referee said it was offside, that same situation is given as such. I can't accept that because I think... Ultimately, what you find in these matches is that it becomes unfair um, to one team or could potentially become unfair to one team. In my opinion, I think we have to get to a stage where we trust the technology. Yeah. And I understand that part of the reason why they have decided to go with umpire's call is because they feel that the technology is not 100%. But I think we have to trust it. If that is what we have, even if it is 99%, make that 99% fear for everyone involved. Yeah, and I think what, what it does in the same way that VAR is employed is I think it seeks to reverse glaringly erroneous calls by, by, by the officiating umpire. So if it's marginal, uh, the umpire's call would stand. But if it is obvious, if, if in the LBW decisions, when they go to the ball tracker, if it completely misses the stumps and the umpire had given it out, they would reverse it because it was obviously a very bad decision. But I take your point. If the ball is hitting stumps, it means that the ball is, is, is hitting stumps. And it, the LBW call should be the call. Yeah. But if, if the umpire's call had said not out and the, the ball is just barely edging the edge of hitting the edge of the stumps the umpire's call remains so i take your point that it is it is one of the gray areas of of the drs that will continue to be problematic because if you see where a decision based on the technology mm -hmm. is clearly saying one thing but because the umpire's call had said the other thing before um it remains with the umpire it is a little hard to digest, especially in a match like this where it was so critical yeah. and the Pakistan is needed to win the match yeah. to, to, to keep the series alive. And I remember post-match after the first test, uh, Mohamed Hafiz had spoken very confidently mm -hmm. that his team would rebound and win the second test. I remember him saying very clearly that they saw where they went wrong. He was a little hard on his players for not doing some of the things they should have done in the first test. And he spoke very boldly that they would have won the second test. So I know there was a lot hanging on, on Pakistan's uh, winning this second test and to lose in the way that they have here, I understand his frustration. By the way, Lance, I'm not even suggesting here, right, that the reason they lost the test match was because of umpire's call um, or the, well, the decisions made by the umpires as um, Mohammed Afiz would want to suggest. Yeah. I've already pointed out. The, I, the, I didn't the agree. The Rizwan discussion that yeah. we just had, though, was critical. It was a critical point in the game. But again, I think the right decision okay. was made there. Yeah, yeah. But, but as a, a, a in general, I don't agree with umpire's call. Yes. I think we should get to a stage where we trust the technology. Yes. And if you're using the technology... Just go with it. E yes, even if it is 99.5% mm -hmm. um, safe, yes. then what it means that you will have a fair process at 99.5%. Yeah. Yeah. As it is now, as far as I'm concerned, the process is not fair. 
um, or could potentially end up not being fair to yeah. one team or the other. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I don't know. I just can't agree with that. Remember the, the false start rule, the previous false start rule where in track and field where you had, if you had one false start, it was charged to the entire Tire field. field. Yeah. Um, I thought that, that was, was ridiculous. And it's the same way I feel about mm. the umpire's call in cricket. Mm. OK, well, the, the third test starts Tuesday on Sportsmax at 7.30 Eastern Caribbean time, 6.30 Jamaica time. And although the Aussies have already won the series, I think this series has been so gripping. And, um, yeah, that's, that's a hard call. May have touched glove for real. Um, I, I am still excited to see this third test. Yeah, I mean, World Test Championship points are on offer. And yeah, that, that's where I think it's pretty clear that it, it, it touched glove. Um, yes, tough on Rizwan, tough on Pakistan, because they, had lo they lost five wickets for 18 runs, and this was the start of the capitulation. Mm -hmm. um, so disappointing for them, because they were really making a good run at the 317-run target. Um, yeah, World Test Championship points and offer in the third test, and yeah. I know both teams will be going all out, well, hopefully, um, to, to make it another spectacle, because this second test was really good. Um, if I were Mohammed Afiz, though, Lance, my focus would be on cleaning up those areas where they let Australia yeah. off the hook in the second yeah. test. Um, and to be fair, he did accept that a lot of the bad moments of the game they had to take responsibility for. But I think he was so incensed by the, what he called the inconsistent umpiring calls that he he used the opportunity to focus more on those. But he did suggest that yeah. they, they, were, they, they had themselves to blame in a lot of the instances. Yeah, with Pakistan, I think it's more about cleaning up the areas yes. um, that they fell down in um, mm. more than it is about the umpire's call. And yes, yes. I don't agree with umpire's call, yeah. but... Having said that, Pakistan really let themselves down like they have done so often yeah. um, in the world of cricket. There's so much talent in that Pakistan team, Lance. They should not be struggling in the world of cricket the way they are with the type of talent and quality they have, yeah. batting and bowling. Yeah. But consistently, they let themselves down in the field especially. Yeah, I agree with you, Ricardo, 100%. Let's go to break. We have a lot more to come on the Sportsmat Zone.